Hey everybody, it feels so good to be back in the studio after I'm um, not being here last week. Uh, thank you to the people here at Outer Circle Media um, for being our home. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Movita Juice Bar. Go to movitajuicebar.com or order through your food apps. Don't forget to go to shoprafa.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. If you're listening here for the first time and you haven't hit that subscribe button, it doesn't cost anything. Just go over to the subscribe button, hit subscribe, and it helps the channel out as we grow. Today's guest is a woman, a uh, comedian, actress, um, just all around badass chingona on the real. And her name is... Tanya Estrada. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Dancing Sober podcast. Um, <laughs> you didn't know it was called Dancing Sober? I yeah. should start asking yeah, yeah. from now on. <laughs> well, the podcast has nothing to do with sobriety, but I gave it that name um, because of a book I read. Okay. Um, Dancing was, Sober. Because I was like, man, I already fucked up one way. <laughs> you know I, mean? I know what you're going to make me do next. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, our guest today, ladies and gentlemen, is Tanya Estrada. Tanya Estrada. And um, I met Tanya through um, one of the comedy nights that I had at uh, the Paramount Ballroom in, um, in East LA Ball Heights. And uh, ever since you walked into that place, I saw this person, this aura, <laughs> this human <laughs> walking through there. It's just like, wow, what a presence you have, seriously. Like, just a gorgeous presence and a gorgeous, like, spirit, too. And then when we talk to you, you're always very like generous, open, laughing, you know, mm -hmm. always a really good person to talk to, too. So um, I did only get to talk to you very little <laughs> those two times that I met you. But you did leave a, uh, some kind of a, an impression on me, especially, you know, just your your being, your physical being, your person, your spirit, I guess, you know, and, and how you walk through a room and how you command a room. So um, since that day I met you and, and then here we are now post covid that was pre covid uh -huh. <laughs> and um i've done some research on you just you know a couple of things to um see who is tanya strada and the things that she does and let's just get into that you're um you are a multi i, I wanted to say multi culti and multi like um, purpose. Some people <laughs> would say multi kuntai. I but, wait. No, just kidding. <laughs> but go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I found out that you have, um, you know, you, you have a mixed blood, which is, and, and it's just, what an interesting mix. <laughs> so please uh, tell us uh, a little bit about your history and where you come from and that you grew up in La Puente Homes. You know. I grew up in La Puente Homes. I know everybody's always like, oh my God, like, where's your accent from? And I'm like, La Puente. <laughs> 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 um, wow, where do I, uh, where do I come from? Well, um, so my mom and dad, they're Chinese. My mom is Chinese Colombian mm. and my dad is black Colombian. Mm. Um, and they came from Colombia to here. So I was born here in, in Los Angeles. Um, in 77, actually the day that Elvis Presley died, which oh, is no kind way. of, yeah, it was wow. like the same. So every time that my the birthday spirit left over there and came out over here, uh -huh, and <laughs> came out over here, like so, something like that. But I don't think he was dead yet. I think he was still mm. sitting on the, on the toilet, toilet. <laughs> when I technically came out. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. I like it. tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, I grew up in LA behind the Wiltshire theater mm. right there, uh, Wiltshire Western. And then, um, we lived over off Harvard and Olympic, and then okay. like Kingsley Olympic Pico yeah. area, and it was real. It's bad. all Mid Wilshire area, right? That's what it's called there. Or it was <coughs> like Koreatown, then like Mid Wilshire, but then like um, it was like like mid, like it was close LA, to Pico LA. Union too, and all that. Yeah. Yeah, and it, yeah. it was real bad. It was like total yeah. gangs, and it was real bad. So, um, uh, at the time, my parents had actually, um, they got a friend's address so i can go to a school outside the district mm. uh and i they ended up going to korean school so oh, that's shit. how i speak korean mm. <laughs> it's because i was where was I, the school uh eighth and wilton okay it was called wilton place elementary uh. so i went to elementary there um and then uh sixth grade is when my parents uh moved to la puente mm. and that's 
And so that's where, it, which was really strange because um, completely different, completely type different, of world. Yeah, yeah, completely, completely type of <clears throat> different world. But also too, it's just uh, you know you learn how to be street smart real quick. That's mm. a whole nother that's a whole nother drama. But La Puente was definitely a place where I can say that I learned to have a backbone, you mm. know, and I got a lot of shit out like that's like the place like where you like fought like to get out the hood mm. you know kind of thing you know my parents were moving there because they thought <coughs> it was a better opportunity but you have and to always like defend yourself and what it's yeah good, one of those places it was one of those type of places you can't be a pushover you can't be a pushover mm. you know and they showed you how not to be a, you can't be a pushover or a pussy mm. you know mm. um but you know i realized that that attitude only goes so far and I realized that you, you once you cross over the 710 freeway, mm. like you have to act different. Mm. <laughs> like once you start going west <laughs> past the 710, you got to be a little bit more civilized, okay, you know? Okay. And so, um, like, you know, I'm not like uh, into being aggressive or fighting or yeah. confrontational, um, like like it during work, you know mm. what I mean? Like as far as that's concerned or or just at all, like, I'm too, you know, just the way, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so old, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, ah. Uh, but I, I've um, so I, I came from there, but I ended up moving back to L.A. Uh, when I was about 18 because I just mm. I missed it. You know, mm. like I had the, there's something about the way that the sun rises and sets here mm. that doesn't feel like anything else mm. in the world. Mm. Like like I remember when I moved to La Puente. The way that the sun rose in the morning, like from the east, oh my God, it made me cry. It was so sad because it was just so level. It was so weird. But in LA, I remember the first time that I got busted and I went to jail. <laughs> so they put me in LA Twin Towers, right? Okay. And I remember my window and I looked out and the and there there it was the sun the was sun. right <laughs> over me. Like when I was a kid, you know, like living in LA. Okay. I was so happy that day. I was wow. all, hell yeah. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? I moved back to jail. LA. <laughs> <laughs> you found your niche. <laughs> yeah, I found my, While I got my spot. Jail. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so so um, eventually I ended up moving back, back here. Mm. Um, so yeah, um, I do have to say that La Puente is responsible for me being so well-rounded. I know mm. that a lot of people wonder like, how the fuck do you do everything that, dude, <laughs> if you didn't, if you did not uh, do stuff mm -hmm. growing up as a kid, I can see how easy it is to get in trouble and get in gangs and yeah. doing fucked Idle up Idle hands shit. are the Idle devil's hands, play Dude, and we're the, <coughs> then little kids are the devil. You know what <laughs> I mean? The children of the corns running yeah. around, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I, I just, so I was always very busy, like, um, you know, I had zero period, mm. like, um, at wow. in school and, yeah. and zero period was actually broadcast journalism, oh, which shit. was where I learned how to be no a, a, a news anchor oh, and how good. to film, how to edit on a real board <coughs> before mm -hmm. there was apps, you know, like mm -hmm, where you mm -hmm. would do the VHS. Yeah. Where you had the round knobs and the you had the knobs and the timer. <coughs> I, I came from that. So that was my wow. zero period. And then, <laughs> wow. And then school, and then, um, you know, there'd be ASB, and then uh, then I was in cheerleading, so there'd be cheerleading. So as soon as cheerleading was over, then I'd come home, and then I'd learn how to play guitar. Like, I had a CD that I loved, like, yeah. with, like, Hole, and, yeah. like, you know, all these different, like, bands, you yeah. know? And then I would <coughs> just, like, ding, 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 like, try to find <laughs> the note, you know, ding, 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 and press pause, and, and I, I see, you know, I see, I see me enseñe, pero... También, I had two teachers, uh, Brian Majeska and Alex Insua. They both were my guitar teachers and showed me how to really move around and hold down a chord. So what came first, the accordion or the, the accordion? Because <laughs> I know you played the accordion. <laughs> first, the chicken or the egg. But you played the, the accordion. How did that like come into your La Puente being? <laughs> My mom. Did you call yourself a cholita when you were young? Did you? No, were you like, no, no, no. I wasn't a cholita. Mm. I was, a, I was like, I was a metalhead. I was a okay, glam. Okay, I thought so. Like yeah. I was, I was a, I was into like Motley Crue and yeah. like Cinderella yeah. and like, which sucked because I had curly hair, you know. Mm. But I wanted to have like that the Spike Nikki Six look. <laughs> yeah. I remember I went to Supercuts. <laughs> And I gave him a picture of the guy from Cinderella, right? Wow, like Eric, yeah, yeah. Eric Bingham, I think it was his name. I gave a picture. I was like, I want my hair to look like this, you know? And I had a picture of Nikki Six's hair, too, from Shot at the Devil. 
<laughs> dude, you should have seen my hair, dude. When she cut it, dude, I looked like a fucking poodle. Did like, she do it? Was oh, yeah, was she curly, cut it. So yeah, it was yeah. curly, but I didn't know what the upkeep would be, and yeah. I didn't know. You know, I was, dude, I was like, it was good for one day, and then it was like. I was 13 years old. You know what I mean? What the fuck yeah. did I know about blow dryers and frizz? You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and like oils and yeah, like yeah. stuff too. Like, or, or dude. Hands, we didn't have flat irons back then. No, By the way, you fucking kids have it fucking good. I just want to say. Yeah. Well, and they have also have irons? parents that teach them now. Like, yeah. we, our parents didn't teach us Not, shit. No, they didn't teach us nothing. So we had the, that's why we learned on the streets. Yeah, you you know what I mean? That's how we're learning streets. on the streets. So, so, so that was, um, <laughs> oh my God, that haircut. That's and funny. I learned. So I, I, but yeah, we have a I picture of it. No, right? <laughs> I know. That was my third grade picture. <laughs> But um, so how'd you pick up the accordion? My that's, that seemed really interesting to me. The accordion, my it was my parents' dream uh, for really? me to be like uh, like Los Tigres del Norte. You know what I mean? Los Bukis. Wow. They wanted me to like yeah. play like you Norteños, know get the yeah. Los Norteños. They wanted me yeah. to play that kind of music, so they wow. threw me on accordion. Because <laughs> 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 bueno, you know what I mean? So Sepa. did you learn to play? Like yeah, I had to. Black the Sabbath on the accordion. Yeah, fucking yeah, fuck do 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 style. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. badass. But I, I but I didn't like it. I didn't like yeah. it. But you know, I learned the basics. But you did end of, up being in bands eventually. Yeah. And you had or you were a part of a Marilyn Manson cover band? Uh huh. What was yeah. that like? And how did all that lead you to one day like hosting an event for Marilyn Manson? Oh yeah, that's a whole rigmarole right there. Um, <laughs> it was just, um, I guess fate, you know, like one of those things. Like I was a huge Marilyn Manson fan mm -hmm. growing up little. You know, it was actually the first concert I ever went to oh, wow. was the Universal <coughs> Amphitheater. It was Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson and the Jim Rose Circus Band. Mm. And my, pa I will never forget that. Um, this girl, uh, Tara, I remember she, I, I know, what's up, Tara? I know she knows that was, I think, her fir co first concert too. Kelly and D. My parents took us to the concert and went and waited for us nearby mm. and then picked us back up and brought us home because we were all like, I think like, 15 16 yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. we're young um but uh i started playing you know i'd been playing guitar for a minute and um it just it so happened like you know i just wanted to follow my dream of like you know what fuck yeah you know what i want to be a rock star mm -hmm. i want to be a girl rock star like if you know and i would see like courtney love and like Cole, you know and i'd be like well fuck you know i'm not wet up but fuck it you know what i mean and i already had disaster with the fucking nikki six hair <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, you know, yeah. but if I learn how to play guitar really good, you yeah. know, like maybe. And and I went along that path, you know, and, and I ended up um, coming to Hollywood, ended up meeting this girl, and she just happened to have this band, and she loved Marilyn Manson too, and before you know it, we were playing together, and we put out an album together, and we met a lot of great people along the way, like throughout the years that just tripped what, me what's out. What's the name of the band? Ophelia Rising. Ophelia Rising. Uh -huh. And do you guys have an album that's is it available like on Spotify and things like that or? Um, I think <coughs> you could check on Apple Music if you put Ophelia yeah. Rising. Yeah, it's still. I'm pretty sure it's still on there. Um, because I played it the other day on an on an what app awesome. on Apple Music. Okay. So look up Ophelia Rising and it's like four songs and all those songs. I that's me playing guitar. Nice. A little, yeah, yeah. a little, I'm a little girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm. and uh, so yeah, so that's how uh, how that started that whole way and um did you guys tour a lot for years or was it something that lasted just a few years or um we played a very uh, around hollywood a lot mm. like so we played a lot of those shows little and clubs, little clubs the whiskey but and you know i'm sure they were jumping roxy shows. the key club um it was um it was fun because i got to live that dream of of being a musician on the sunset Strip. yeah yeah you know? and th there's and a particular era and a particular time where that's just fucking but it was awesome. the la it was the last it was the last of it it was yeah. the last of what that era was and you know as a girl to be immersed in it you know it, it's so young from being so young like you know t 10 years old and listening to motley Crue and guns and roses and being and not being able to get to the sunset strip even though i was right there in la but mm. you know how i don't know how to get out the house you know <laughs> what i mean i you know what i mean i go out to the sidewalk get lost you know what i mean my parents took me everywhere so okay. it wasn't until later that i ended up 
at those places in those areas in those and it was just so surreal but it just felt like wow like to me that was my arrival mm. like i was like wow I, my dream you know to play guitar in a band hang out on the sunset strip hang out with a bunch of rock stars and that was the the beginning of everything and i did that for years and i don't know you know but like there's just something about girl bands like mm. you know they're great and all but do you know why and i've said this before i know people know <laughs> this i said this before but do you know the number one reason why girl bands don't last uh, i'm gonna take a guess no i'm gonna let you tell me <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> because eventually all the chicks <laughs> I'll end up on the same period cycle. Oh my God, that's hilarious! I thought I was gonna be. I mean, the, the, does that create infighting? So obviously, have you ever yeah. been around a yeah, girl yeah, yeah. who's about to catch that, a period? I was gonna say because of infighting, but then it's because of that. Wow, <laughs> think about that. You imagine that's, four or five chicks. I have heard of that. Like if you hang around with a person long enough, you guys end up on the same cycle. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> after touring a little bit, you're all in the same cycle and. Just being around each other, just, yeah. you know, just everything for, you know, you're crying and you're blaming and you're pointing yeah. and this and that. And it's, I mean, it's I was in a band, too, and I, I I compared it to, like, breaking up with seven relationships at once, is. you know? It's, it's like a marriage. You break up with everybody and it hurts, even though it's not their fault. It's not, you know, with some people it is their fault, with, but there's other band members that it's not their fault mm -hmm. or, you know, and it's just like the separation is what hurts, regardless of. Mm -hmm. why it, it was separated so i i can totally see that yeah yeah, yeah it's a it's a marriage i yeah. agree it'll, it'll always be yeah. a you know and then there's the bands that you end up like you know hopefully like leaving on good terms you yeah. know it's what you yeah. always it's what you always hope for for hope for the best you know yeah. um but yeah so that was um <laughs> hilarious that was that i did that for a good minute and then that'd be a lot of fun it, it, it was but then um my band days were some of the funnest days i had it you know yeah. what they were and <clears throat> and uh i got to relive them a few different incarnations and in different you know with mm. different people um i played in a band called lose your fear mm. um with an ex of mine uh, i was in that uh and then um i ended up with uh slaughter with Martin. Oh, yeah, Martin. slaughter, <laughs> slaughter yeah. before slaughter slaughter before slaughter <laughs> and it was and it was um everything in a band i always wanted and it's dreamed of, of doing yeah. in because we lived the rock star experience like to the thousandth power <laughs> of you know the way that james you, you had it turned up to 11. dude 12 food 12. <laughs> <laughs> the way James um, set up the whole um, just inside of the of the lockout, it was like one side we had all our equipment set, and then on the other side it was like Guitar Center, like nice. all set up like with pegs and like if I, yeah you know if I needed chords you know there it's was like there. yeah like or this or that you can just pull it right off yeah. the rack and we didn't have to go to the <laughs> store. And then um, I would come in and my food was there, you know, cater, mm. full catering every day, got my food, you know. He, uh, we had a nice little stock fridge. Producers chill. are really good, bro. James Callahan <laughs> is I the know. best freaking yeah, producer. Yeah. And, you know, he's engineer. He's the engineer now for the uh, Felipe Esparza What's Up oh, podcast. He? Yeah. Oh, okay, he's good. The, and, he, yeah, yeah. and he made their new studio. He, did, he built that new yeah, studio Yeah, he's, he's a fuck. He, that's why Jimmy oh, that's awesome. James is one of my, yeah, I my like best him. friends. He's yeah. he's so amazing because he his brain the way everything works he's fucking, yeah. he's a badass but so the experience that he made for us was so amazing like dude he get, he got us a tour van like mm. it was the van was dope it was yeah. like this outfitted bus and yeah. it was oh, that was so amazing the recording the going to go record yeah. a Joshua Tree the going to Joshua Tree the being out there with your band and yeah. like just you know the closeness that you feel. Yeah um at that time in my life did you guys shroom out there no no no, no we, didn't, <laughs> we didn't shroom no, no no we didn't we didn't do nothing like that we didn't get all mm -hmm. yeah. like we we would drink or smoke pot you know mm -hmm. but we don't we didn't do anything past that like nobody okay. was all nobody was on one or nothing weird um i didn't discover shrooms till after <laughs> <laughs> but at that time in my life when slaughter came together it was like a real like hard time of acceptance you know this one relationship that just kept festering and coming back and mm. just like, you know, it was like the final end of it. And it was like, I really needed to do something with myself 
that proved to me how strong I was. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like picking up the guitar and cranking it yeah. and like making making sounds come out. I think sometimes just making art or making any kind of art mm -hmm. just makes you feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It's like that same thing that you can get from a relationship. You could also get with your relationship with your art. It's true. If you like if you also nurture it and also like work with it and also, you know, mm -hmm. it also has its ups and downs mm -hmm. too. But yeah, I can totally see that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y acabó ese, and you guys continued. Yeah, Me well the <coughs> pandemic happened. So uh, the yeah. you know, after um we wrapped up shop because we had recorded the album, then the album had to get mm -hmm. mastered, so that was a whole process. So we closed up shop and then the pandemic happened. So, you know, we didn't yeah. do anything after that. Nobody you know what I mean? You yeah. know, we're not going to go play Sophie Stadium anytime soon. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're, we're good. Like, we live, we live the dream. So, <laughs> so what I want to go a little bit backwards to um, when you did host, uh, I think it was Marilyn Manson's birthday or something. Like yes. That. Because I want to talk about how you, um, like, then somehow got into hosting and have been hosting different things. And you will be hosting something that's coming up <laughs> soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. Oh, pinch me. So when I started comedy, um, so the, so this we is didn't even get into that. You do stand up yet. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, for yeah. my audience members. Yeah. Yeah. She so does stand up. So well. I do stand up. Right. Oh, yeah. Surprise. <laughs> Big reveal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am and I started um, about 10 years back uh, and I wanted I, I didn't know what I was doing with it yet, except that I wanted to be funny. All mm -hmm. I knew. And then as I, I learned my craft. Um, I understood that there was so many different avenues you could take comedy, mm -hmm. kind of like a doctor when you're going through everything right before your residency. You mm -hmm. decide what you're going to do with it. And so um, one thing that really appealed to me was hosting mm -hmm. because you're the face, you're holding the mic, mm -hmm. you're commanding the, the attention of everyone. Your job is to be the icebreaker, the palate cleanser, the palate cleanser, yeah. the just the the overall seasoning flavor yeah. of just you know tickles and laughter th spread throughout. Um, something that I that I watched my dad do a mm. lot. My dad would did his own little thing, you know. So um, that's a whole nother Oprah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I realized <sighs> that from doing open mics and doing um, just different things as I went on. I was like, I think I want to host. I mm. think I want to host, you know? And so little by little, things started coming up. Things started opening up. There was little things. Like, I think one of the, the biggest thing that I got, I was so excited, is I got to ho uh, host the Hollywood snow Snowball or something. And I was like, Snowball? You know what I mean? <laughs> But was it a party no, or? I love proms. You know what I mean? Who doesn't love a good prom? You know what I mean? And on Hollywood Boulevard, who I was does, in. Who does that? Or what was it? Celebrities or? It was a. It's a. I never heard of that. Uh, the, the it was a, it's, it's like a Christmas thing, like you know, um, in the like. So Christmas, during the parade or at the end of the parade or. During the no. week of the parade, okay. they do they do things along Hollywood Boulevard, Christmassy mm -hmm. stuff. So the Hollywood Snowball was this thing. So I I hosted it, and it felt so good to like buy my beautiful sequin dress nice. and you yeah. know what I mean? No, I'm, you know, put on my nice shoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bust out the pantyhose. <laughs> like it just you know it just it's a whole vibe like getting ready to host something, and I really enjoy it like mm. i really really enjoyed it and, and plus i love dressing up anyways like everywhere i go i always make sure that i'm dressed you know mm -hmm. to the at least to the nine you know <laughs> because the day that you're not someone's gonna pop out and catch a picture you know what i mean imagine if i would have came today like not showered yeah. like oh yeah it's just a podcast you know what i mean they didn't know it was all video <laughs> that'd be awful so yeah, it's yeah. just like oh um so the way so all along the way um, throughout the years, I've been hosting really different cool things. Mm -hmm. Um, and then through the recent years, like my big, big break was when I got asked to host, um, help host over at the Be Real Snoop Dogg birthday party, oh, the shit, 420 yeah. thing mm. that they did in City of Industry. Okay. And it was cool because it was like La Puente, you know what I mean? La Puente yeah. Heights. Like all the fucking fancy avocado people. Heights. Avoc yeah. Well, no, I, I say La Puente, not even Avocado Heights, dude. That's like, you know what I mean? Over by uh, that's even that's higher even for that's even higher up. You know what I mean? The joke that's La Puente Heights. Okay, you know what I okay. mean? It's just yeah, a, it's, you just cross Temple. You know what I mean? It's like right there. Like everybody knows. Okay. But um, it was that when I did that thing. Um, but then um, to my surprise was when I 
just ended up hosting Marilyn Manson's birthday party. Mm. And to like have that forever on my resume How did all, is I like, mean, there's, I guess, industry connections or um, was it something that you started to put out there like, hey, I want to host or <laughs> were people just randomly like saying, hey, Tanya will do it? Um, it was after, usually after, okay, this is how I get my work. Okay. <laughs> this is like, like super like yeah. the, this is what we want. This is what we want. You want to know how you, yeah. you want to know how you, how you get work. Yeah. Okay. When you show up in a great mood, right? Yeah. When you walk in a room and you light up that room, right? You make people feel good. You make them laugh. People remember that feeling. Yeah. People, you remember that feeling, yeah, right? Yeah, it makes you feel special, yeah. right? Everybody just wants to fucking, either everybody wants to laugh or get fucked. You <laughs> know what I mean? There's only so much you could do in public. <laughs> okay. Yeah, true. But the way that all my work has ever come is that I'll usually do something. People will see me and then they'll approach me and be like, mm. hey, I have something coming up. Can I get your number? Mm. And then from there, it's mm. like an automatic lead of work. So I would say that running bat average of every time I do one thing that I show up to, I get two, if not three leads wow, that's good. of w additional work or additional people that want to work with me on something else. Because what happens is, is when I host a show, and they f they're like, oh, my God, you're fucking hilarious. You know what I mean? And they they want to connect with you and they think in their head, oh, my God, she would be great for that. Oh, my God, she would be perfect. Like yeah. and and um, and it has a lot to do with um, like my presentation, how I show up looking mm -hmm. and just the whole the whole vibe mm -hmm. and not being a bitch. Like, I yeah. think a lot of people always assume because she's a bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Only if you're trying to fuck me and not pay my rent. <laughs> and I'm fucking mean. You know, <laughs> what comes first? <laughs> but so <laughs> it's funny. hilarious. So so um so that's how that that works. And sometimes it's just the right place at the right time. Yeah. And that and that day, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And it was um. I was there for the for his birthday party. I go every year. I've gone every year for the last ten years, mm. uh, except for this twenty twenty. You know, for since the pandemic, pandemic. we haven't. We, there hasn't. There hasn't been one. Um, so you always went to this party. Yeah, for you. Yeah, just to hang the, out. Well, you invited. Yeah, his yeah. birthday. His birthday party. I started going with a with a friend, mm -hmm. and then um, I made friends with him. So then he mm. just started inviting me every birthday. Okay. So I I went to this birthday, um, and I went with my friend Paula. And I imagine it's it's a it's a big to do it's you know like a stage and i mean because when you say i'm doing a birthday party was there like you know a whole setup or was it just see this is the thing about out? so this is the thing about his birthday parties is that you never know what you're going to expect when mm. you show up mm. and he does something different all the time it's always and mm. you don't know until you get there so uh paula and i walked in and it was a very narrow place and we looked around and it was just like, huh, what the fuck is going on here? And it was like a little bar and it had like, um, you know, the drinks that, you know, that they were going to serve, et cetera, you know, no photography. All we knew guys were, people were setting up, but it turned out to be that it was a karaoke birthday party. As everybody started filling in, it was like a little karaoke bar that they mm. rented out. Um, but <coughs> there was nobody to host or, or get it going or anything. Yeah. And, um, Marilyn Manson's wife, the Lindsay, party starter. the party starter, there's no party starter. Right. And mind you, this place is full of rock stars. Okay. Yeah. Rob Zombie's there. Yeah. James E. Hoff from Smashing Pumpkins is there. Yeah. Neither of them want to take the mic. I look I, I walk up, I walk up. So, so Lindsay Manson's wife was standing there with her sister, her twin sister, Ashley. Uh, if you know those two twins, they were the original American Apparel twins. Remember? Oh, wow. Yeah. So they're standing there, right? And the uh, and Ashley was married to James Eha, right? Mm. So they're all standing there, and I walk up, I'm all, because I see the mic, right? I'm all, I'm all, oh my God, are we doing karaoke? And she's all, yeah. She goes, will you host? I was like, I was okay. like, you don't want to host. I look at Jason, but you don't want to host. He's all. And then she's all, I've been trying to tell, but he doesn't want to do it. And I was like, fuck, yeah, I'm hosting. That's it. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm done. On. I'm on it. And then so I went up there, and now I know what was going on, the whole little setup. And then uh, I introduced myself to the guy. I go, I'm going to host this bitch. I got yeah. this. And then so I asked him, I said, um, 
I'm gonna need my opening song. I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think I did it? <laughs> you went first. Oh, you think I did yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I asked for NWA straight out of Compton. <laughs> I was like, by the way, I don't even need the lyrics. You can just I'm turn that screen off. <laughs> <laughs> so they all gathered around, you know, yeah, and yeah. it was so cool to do that line. Wow. Uh, you know, something, you know, like Charles Manson. And, oh, you know, that right. line right yeah, there. Yeah. And he was and he was all like this. With the crime record. Like, like Charles, Charles Manson. Manson. Yeah, he yeah. was all. So that was so cool. And then um, after that, I kept it going and just kept asking whoever wanted to go up to mm. go pick the next song and yeah. the next song so they could keep going. And just kind of keep it going. And, so, and a host was born. A hostess was born. Oh, no, that was just that <coughs> One was just of last year. That was <laughs> my that was that was the last hosting job before yeah, yeah. the pandemic started. Oh. That was the la that was uh, not even job. It was, you know, yeah. a gift. It was, uh, you know, yeah. to host was a gift. But it was um, January 2020, tw January 2020. Yeah, right before January 5th, 2020 the shutdowns right before the shutdown. So that's how that happened. Wow. Yeah. So and, <laughs> and hosting now has led you while well, you've done different things. But um, do you want to just say the announcement that, um, you know? Oh, oh, yeah. I, I've hosted different things like I've hosted um, Antonio Pelayo's La Bulla. Right? OK, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, I hosted Loretta Vamp's fashion show nice. at El Velorio. Yeah. Um, and um, I just got word like two days ago. I've been crying for like two days. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> OK, breaking news. <laughs> Um, I just, you've been crying. I've been crying for two. <laughs> oh, you awful. thought this was all tequila? No. <laughs> I've been crying. Yeah. I've been crying for That's like, awesome. like, yeah. Oh, I get, I still get excited. Like if yeah, I yeah. get a good job, yeah, like yeah. a good, like call for a job, I'm fucking screaming, dude. Yeah. I'm screaming. Like, yeah. like my, my neighbors are calling 911. Like <laughs> something's wrong with Tanya. Like, yeah, she's, yeah. like but I, I was screaming. I was crying. I was so happy. I couldn't believe it. I was, so I, will be hosting lucha baboom lucha baboom yeah as a ringside commentator as a ringside commentator wow. and the front uh right there in the shit talking box yeah. right at the very <laughs> top where every where everybody sits it's yeah. usually blaine Capach and jeff yeah. davis or drew carey or jeff wow. ross or you know or tom uh yeah. tom Harmon. like it's always but it's gonna be um um P it's, his name is Peter. Is it Peter Oliver? Peter and Eric Clark, I believe the names. Mm. Don't kill me on the names. It's Eric and Peter. That's what <laughs> I know. Eric, remember <laughs> what we do in the shadows? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Peter. What happened to Peter? <laughs> oh, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a ringtone. So, so it'll be us. When does this start? Uh, it'll be next Friday and Saturday, the 11th and the 12th. Wow. So next week, and is it going to be a continuing mm -mm. series? Just mm -mm. Um, oh. Lucha Baboom happens uh, three times a year, okay. And it's um, Valentine's, Cinco de Mayo, and Halloween. Oh, okay. um, and sometimes there's a summer show, uh, so I don't know how, how it's going to go. But this is my first run as being the main host up there. With okay. you know, uh, so all three of us will be commentating together. Oh, that's awesome. Um, the first time I got into Lucha Baboom, I was. Uh, I did red carpet pre-hosting mm. and then uh, I started doing the ring girl started being a ring girl and so this is like my my graduation my graduation <laughs> uh, like I feel like I feel like really like at this company because not only is it a family mm. Lucha Vavum is also a company mm. you know I feel like I started as the janitor wow <laughs> You know, no. like, well, yeah. not even a janitor, like a high grade janitor. So you're like, you know the, what I mean? you're like the, the hot Cheetos guy now. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> on the hot cheetos of entertainment yeah, yeah. <laughs> of, of wrestling oh, shout out to richard montanez i love you dad he's yeah. a hot cheetos i love him he's oh so that's dope. awesome yeah you he's met dope. him yeah i yeah. met him yeah he i i it was so great i ran into him in uh at javier's in newport beach oh, like in 2013 yeah. and i was walking to fancy. the restroom yeah fancy <laughs> and i was walking to the restroom and i hear tanya and i'm like Hmm. Yeah, he goes. It's me, Richard, your Facebook friend. I'm all because <gasps> remember this was before it was, it was Facebook just a Facebook friend. friend. Uh -huh. That's hilarious. Yeah, and we yeah. took a picture, and yeah, it was so cool to to meet him personally. So That's I've known funny. him for a while. Yeah, yeah. Love Richard. Wow. So it's pretty exciting things coming up for you. Very exciting. I'm very excited. Yeah. I'm. Uh, yeah. Besides myself. <laughs> Hopefully that'll lead to uh, other things, and because uh, I know that you also have been you know 
dab dabbling whatever the word is in acting right mm -hmm. i mean and uh, you definitely have the face for it the character for it you know you. get in there get some work hopefully it'll lead to more stuff but i, I did want to uh, i saw a couple of names of, on your imdb mm -hmm. and you tell me which one of these four character names was your favorite uh -huh. <laughs> i didn't write down the movies but there's a character named katrina mm -hmm. a character named gypsy mm -hmm. a character named zombie mm -hmm. and a character named puta uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I'm like, yeah, I was puta number one. And <laughs> yeah. So uh, my favorites were Katrina and puta. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about those? Um, so um, puta, <laughs> we'll go start with that one. The, uh, so puta was a character uh, that was developed uh, in regards to a couple that was seeking outside influence to spice up their marriage uh, so they thought they'd bring in interviews for a third person mm -hmm. like a third mm -hmm. for a third a third yeah yeah so i came in you know wow. like you know uh figuring out how much i'm gonna get paid mm. more of anything you know it's <laughs> like you know like does this pay you know i'm just there well, on were a these job comedy shorts that or it, was this uh it was a little comedy short oh, okay, yeah okay. it was like a little comedy skit yeah, yeah. kind of thing funny. Uh, so her name, so my name was Puta, because that's what I was able to put on my neck, because I was able, because my whole character, my whole little chola char character that I would do, yeah. like the one thing I would pride myself on is that I could, um, what's the word? I could do the calligraphy like mm. on my on my neck, by yourself, by myself. You can look in the mirror and do calligraphy letters on. Uh huh. Damn, uh huh. So I prided right myself there. on that, and I figured, okay, I only got like four. I got four. It's four spaces four right letters, here. Yeah. You know, four <laughs> good letters. What are you gonna what are you gonna write? You know? I'm like puta. Puta. <laughs> you know? Cause it's you know, you know a good short be like, what are you looking at? Puta. puta. Like <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a double look, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That's hilarious. So that character was that. And then um the Katrina character, I really love that because that was the story of the Lady of the Dead. Yeah. of the original Katrina. So oh, okay. I played her. So oh. I, I essentially played... Was this also something that you guys produced? On, or no, was this was somebody somebody else produced. Okay. You were hired. Uh, for I was hired for, for this role. Um, and it was the Latina... Uh, I feel like the Latina Freddy Krueger is mm. what it was. Because really? So it was a horror movie? It's a horror movie. What was the name of that? Um, Los Muertos. Los Muertos. Los Muertos. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It was, yeah. It, it was Do good. you have an acting agent? <clears throat> Um, agua, actually, agua. actually, um, it's so funny. Um, I kind of always been my own agent, mm. you know, um, how could I say it? Like, I feel that I've had agents and the ones that I've had have been amazing, like mm. do great, great work. Um, but sometimes things happen, people get busy, they got to go on, do something else. It's totally cool. And I, then it, it falls back on me. And, mm. um, the greatest thing I've learned about uh, booking jobs is that people don't want to deal with your agent. Mm. They want to talk to you like they yeah. really do. And the agent sometimes, uh, you know, through no fault of their own, they could be having a bad day or they don't know who you are. You know what I mean? They feel calls all day. You know what I mean? Mm. And they may have a bad attitude and ward off, you know, what opportunity was coming to you. Um, but I've, I've, the most of the biggest jobs that I've secured have been something that I secure myself. Yeah. Um, I, I am, I am union. I am SAG. Mm. Um, and I've been, I like, you know, the kind of acting that I like to do, I like funny roles. Um, if you see in my IMDb, I have like over 20 something credits. Mm -hmm. They're pretty much all funny so of some sort, but it's always a character that you see where you're just kind of like, Oh shit, was that Tanya? Like, that's mm. what I, w that's what I always <laughs> wanted my acting career to mm -hmm. be. Like, I don't want that kind of acting career where I have to like get into character for like, you know what I mean? Months like and you know what I mean? Change yeah. everything. You know what I mean? And like, I don't know, just, uh, it, I mean, the great for all the actors that do that and put their time yeah, yeah. into that. But I realized one thing about my choice of work when I choose work to mm. do, it has to be funny. Mm. It has to be something that's funny. That's going to be left as funny mm. and it has to be good. It what, has to be good. Why do you think you're attracted to the comedy so much? because it makes me feel good hmm. it makes me feel good to laugh so it's part of the it's if you're not having fun why do it <laughs> if i'm not having fun why do it yeah. and if, if i'm doing things that are um like 
not fun or mm. or serious like it i even just said serious my whole stomach went like <laughs> like it feels um so heavy on you mm. and just the heaviness that comes with it i feel yeah. attracts more heaviness so yeah. i feel that when you laugh it lightens so much off of you yeah, definitely. that uh that you if you keep that light energy tienes más chance que te pegue algo mejor que mm. te pegue algo um like pesado you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh and you know like there's this project right now i'm working on uh with a couple of friends and um and i i i'm happy that i'm i'm partner on this but you know i feel like kind of telling them you know I, I don't i don't know if i really want to do this you know because this shit's heavy you know mm. this shit's heavy um and they puts me in a mood like mm. a really even though yeah. talking about it puts you, you in a mood in even though it's interesting as fuck what we're yeah. doing like hella interesting yeah. i'm just like ah oh, you know and i i think um like the best thing is like to talk to them and see how can we do this where i don't have to view 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 it you know what i mean mm. i would just guide on the way to kind of go about it because it's just mm. i don't i don't even know it's kind of like and you know and it's nothing comedy related at all yeah. so I, I just and you see how my whole mood changes yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's a whole thing it's, but it's not, not to bad me. <laughs> huh? i mean it's not a bad thing that your mood changes you know it's but i, I think know. it's interesting um i think it's interesting that uh you know um where it where it can take you but you do have to be willing to go there mm -hmm. like you know if it is going to take you somewhere different that you're not used to doing in front of camera you know so there is the whole vulnerability factor where you have to allow yourself to go there and if you can't go there, then it's better not to, you know. Um, but I think um, that it, it could open up, like, interesting things. Um, it, so, and what I was talking about was a project where I'm helping to produce. I'm not necessarily talent on it. Oh, okay. So, so it's a project where mm -hmm. it's, the, you know, the outside kind of thing. When it's, like, some kind of a role, like, where I have to get into some mm. kind of... I can do it. Mm. It's just the role has to be... It's got to have me. Like, it's got to yeah. have a reason for me to be able to get get into that. And I've done... And even though, like, on my MDB, like, I, they're all funny stuff, mm. there's been a few that aren't on there. they are heavy shit. Like, super heavy shit. And yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and I, ca and I can act. Like, I went to the Frida Kahlo Theater of, okay. of acting yeah, for yeah. years. Yeah. So... Um, but I realized that the acting roles I really want is either a good, lighthearted, funny, reoccurring mm. role where like, oh, like every time I pop up, it's always something funny, you know, oh, yeah. it makes them laugh or comedic uh, relief, comedic relief, yeah. you know, but I don't really want to have to sit there and memorize a whole fucking monologue and fucking <laughs> this and that and fucking cry and this and that. Unless I mean, again, I, used to, be able to, I used to be able to memorize shit mm. like, you know, give me the give me four pages of script and I'll be. I'll get them. I'll be there ready the next day. But my brain doesn't work anymore. <laughs> it's hard to memorize for me now. It's so difficult. But um yeah, memorization is a really tricky thing. I'm I'm good at memorization, yeah. but it's not even the uh the memorization anymore. It's the um the choosing my time. Like mm. choosing the time like lately I've been really huge on time management, like mm. trying to broker my time and break it down where I'm using all the minutes and all the seconds and all the hours of mm -hmm. all the day and it's little tricks that i have to do to just like oh, okay i gotta just you know keep five streaming, minutes keep of meditation streaming. little things like that it's it oh that <coughs> one um it's 11 i do 11 11, okay. 11 um and it's every morning and it and it gets my body flowing mm -hmm. it gets the the air in my brain um I stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing all this up, it reminds me that um, I think I heard on something that I was listening to that we have a friend in common from Sacred Light. Arlene? Yeah. You know Arlene? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I, I love, love Arlene. You, Arlene. <laughs> and, and I've been to the sound baths. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. And they're amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, the whole sound bath thing and the whole world of Reiki and, you know, those energy manipulating <laughs> i don't know what they Shit. are but you see this amazing, aura dude. you yeah. see this aura you right? can you can credit this to arlene and lorraine <laughs> okay that's her mom <laughs> yeah and her they, mom they, is yeah amazing. they 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 they've made they've helped when you walk out of that oh, i yeah. always walk out feeling an entire like foot taller yeah and i'm already tall 
But I walk out of there feeling a foot taller and like 20 pounds lighter. And oh it's God. just from lying down and listening mm -hmm. and, you mm -hmm. know, them um, Doing manipulating the Reiki. Yeah. And tuning you and just having your energy. So, Dude. so my whole everything, that energy, yeah. that's all them. They're yeah. they're They work for me. They, they're working for me day and night with their yeah. meditations, with their good energy, with their good vibes. Like even if I, I when I had the when I got COVID and I hit up Arlene, I'm like, hey, girl, I got I got COVID. Her, she sent me great Reiki vibes. Mm. They sent me good vibes. She sent me a whole 10 pages that essentially cured me. Wow. Um, Arlene's amazing. I love her. She's yeah. like, that's family right there. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And, oh, yeah, because you know I'm um, Guillermo, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah right there. <laughs> the east side he hasn't opened yeah. up, huh? No, they're still not open, so um, it's all know, good. he's waiting. He's, that's he's all If good. he can wait, then, you know. Yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah. no no big deal, but, yeah. yeah, I love them. Yeah, I really – it took me a long time to finally go. She had told me about her business, and when I finally went, I just couldn't stop going. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, so through the pandemic, she did it through Instagram. Yeah. So I still joined on Instagram and did it through Instagram. Um, and then um, I don't think I've been to a live one yet. Has she done – I don't think we've done a live no. one yet. She was going to do one – she's been doing one, I think, in Malibu, like over the ocean. Oh, yeah. So I want to try to hit that one, but we usually do it over uh, online – and then she has this other great healer. Her name is uh, Rose, Rose mm. uh, Morrow from Bliss Energy Healing. Um, she can tap into is that the breathing one or the uh, sh she's the uh, like she can get pain out of your body or mm. she can get like trauma out of your body and she can clear like past traumas or cord cutting or she knows like what's happened to you where you've locked mm. pain or where you've uh, there's energy that's trapped. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to trip out on this? This is fucking trippy. Which, I mean, I don't really talk about this. I mean, who really would want to talk about well, this? this but this is want. like, this is what you want to hear? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, a few years ago, I was dating this guy. And he fucked me up. Right? And he punched me in the face. Hmm. Okay? And um, I had just gotten a, a, a new nose and he broke it. Hmm. Like. So, um, you know, and he broke my finger, like my guitar finger, everything Jeez. like, yeah. So it was, it was hard going through a few months of that, you know, and there was a lot in me that I just kind of stayed. it shut me down in a way that I didn't even think that could happen. Um, and I don't know if it was like a year and a half later that I met Rose, like through Arlene and I did this session with her. I was so trippy because she was like going through doing her thing, you know, and it's this, I don't know how she does it. And then she like went C4 on this side, something on her little thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, were you punched in the face? I was like, wow. whoa, like nobody kn who would know that. Nobody knows wow. that except the police. <laughs> 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 who would know that and uh i was like yeah and she goes okay she goes uh that's harboring that's keeping you from being creative she goes so wow. i'm gonna clear that up for you she goes just drink a lot of water for the next you know few days da, da, da. you're not even gonna believe that that day that i left her from arlene's office who mm. was there at, at her shop I played guitar that day for like wow. five hours for the <laughs> first. I hadn't played guitar in forever. And that day I just jammed. Wow. It didn't even, my fingers didn't even hurt. I was yeah. just like jamming. So it was just, I was like, wow, that was for real. Yeah. So that's what she does is she takes traumas out of you that keep you from reaching your full potential. So yeah, wow. it's a whole, yeah. it's a whole little system to keep Tanya Strata going. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there's a whole. You know what I mean? Well, life for anybody, you know. So, so people True. don't have these little hacks that we know of. Because I didn't know it or even, like, consider anything like sound healing until I went to the first one. And, I mean, I welled up. You feel you know? it, right? I welled up completely and was like, why am I so emotional lying here listening to these sounds, you know? So soothing. And it just... It just brings all this shit up and oh, don't get me to start fucking yeah. crying. Chris, can we get some napkins, <laughs> please? Like, uh, um, there's something so beautiful about 
the way that you feel from a beautiful tuning like that, mm-hmm. especially from and, angelic and Yeah, and it people. is and, and it, it is the tuning, like right? It it's tuned, tuning it's like it's like fine tuning the guitar, so then your your body, your energy gets fine tuned into a way where like everything seems to be like right in place. Um I uh, it's like a, I think like when you do maintenance on a car, mm. like when you tune up a car, like mm-hmm. you know when you change the spark plugs, mm-hmm. or like when you change um, like the oil mm-hmm. and like every and the and the belt and everything has to be running like right. Mm-hmm. I think it's like that, and also like when you're tuning a guitar. Yeah, absolutely. Just yeah. in case. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Just in <coughs> case. You never yeah. know. Oh. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Sometimes I have a little war Barbara Walters nah, effect on me. You never it, know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so, and from someone that, like myself, you know, my upbringing and just everything I've been through, I was fucking really aggro, mm. not aggressive, but just very uh, on that, what? You know, kind of mm. just ready. And I know that I didn't need to be like that. And, and that, like, just soothed everything and just left me in a state of calmness like um i've been going to her since 2015 Mm. and it's uh and it's changed me for the better like and i i i don't even know i have i have this whole aura Mm. this this calmness to to gratitude to we are Mm. sacred light for sure that's what it is Um, we are sacred light we are sacred light right Uh uh-huh and on instagram at we are sacred light yeah you guys need to um at her and it all oh, and turn on notifications because sometimes she has sales on her crystals mm-hmm. if you can get your hands on one of her crystals because you can buy crystals anywhere like all over the place but there's nothing like getting a real crystal from her that has that supercharged hollywood creative real mm-hmm. <laughs> like you don't even know like her like we're just talking mm. i tripped out like and i'm not even gonna say the names like when we would go she would go on live mm-hmm. and all the people that were logging mm-hmm. on for this i'm like mm-hmm. pues, okay <laughs> yep. arlene okay arlene yep. be knowing some people <laughs> so it's and it's and it's and it's funny how we all come in and meditate together in this whole and it's this whole collective of the, the and yeah. the frequency because you know we all run on energy we all run on frequency like a radio station mm-hmm. you know channel yeah and the world has its own frequency so and the world has its own frequency and they're all at they're all at different levels and you know and what we me by that is like you know when people are like oh the vibe or the vibe mm-hmm. like you know the vibe like when you walk in you know Literally what i mean and vibe. your chick is pissed off at you don't play stupid you know she's fucking mad at you that's the <laughs> vibe you feel that right or like when you walk you in a room energy. yeah or when you walk in a room you know what i mean and you see some fucking fat fodonga lady that fucking doesn't like your tits and she fucking gives you the up and down <laughs> You fucking know, though. That's the vibe. You know the vibe, right? <laughs> we all... <laughs> I was going to say Fodonga. Fodonga, lady, yeah. yeah. We, we, we all have different vibes and different ways that our, our energy relates. Yeah. And um, and I realized that it's it's so hard to get into this one mode where I've been at mm. with... And that's Arlene's channel. Mm. Arlene's channel is I'm writing I'm riding that frequency wave. Yeah. And, uh, and, ever, and ever since I've been in that, like, look at my career. It's mm. like... And it's nothing, yeah. um, nothing like, um, I mean, the proof's in the pudding, like yeah. just, just the way that, that everything has gone, the way that everything just vibes, um, and the calmness. And you know what the most beautiful part about the great vibe is? Nothing bad ever happens. Mm. Like, I don't know if you know, but you know, if you're Latino and you're always like, oh, somebody put brujeria on me, mm. right? Lisa Esparza <laughs> posted that. She's uh, she po- Lisa Esparza posted on her Instagram. I fucking died. She goes, I don't know who needs to hear this, but. <laughs> <laughs> Already. <laughs> Lisa put, I don't know who needs to hear this. But nobody put brujeria on you. You just keep making bad decisions. <laughs> I think I saw that one. That's a good one. <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true because yeah. you think about it, yep. you know? Anytime we ever got in trouble, you know you fucked up. Yeah. You know you should have uh, chosen yeah, yeah, yeah. to do whatever it was that you did that got you in trouble. <laughs> there was the initial seed that you placed. Yeah, th- there yeah. was the there was the initial seed. So I've 
I've ever since I've I've been with her. Like I mean, shit still happens. I still have a bad day. You yeah, know what I mean? Course. Or if I, you know what I mean? I still get parking tickets here and there. You <laughs> know what I mean? Like nobody's immune yeah. from that in L.A. No matter what. But <laughs> no crystal will keep you immune from parking tickets. Yeah. But like the vibe and the energy. I realized that it's, it keeps God. me very peaceful. I miss the live ones. Don't you want to do did one? Do two of the, I did two of the um, the online ones. And I actually reached out to her because I talked about this with Martin and his co-host uh -huh. on the other channel. Dubai Tokaya. Yeah. And um, we talked about um, going out to her, seeing if they could do. But um, she hasn't been able to do a live one. She's still not doing live ones. So maybe when as soon as she opens up, I mean, I would love to come see her. A shout out to my Ashe. Ashe. Yeah. So. Well, you know, we got carte blanche. You know, we can yeah. call up Arlene and be like, what's up, girl? Yeah. Let's go meet up over at the park. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, definitely. Yeah. I'm sure we can get one in. Yeah. Um, We're winding down. Mm -hmm. And um, do you want to plug anything before um, we log out or. Oh, plug anything. Um. If you guys watch this and you guys are here in L.A. and you guys want to come watch Lucha Vaboom, go to luchavaboom.com. And I don't even know what camera I would even be looking at, but I'm like, this is, your camera. is this my camera? Yeah. I'd be looking all tuerta. <laughs> <laughs> Cross eye off. Um, uh, if you guys are in the L.A. area, Lucha Vaboom will be at the Mayan Theater February, 12, uh, February 11th and 12th. That's Friday and Saturday. And it never before has this happened. The Mayan is actually having me stay and host an actual dance after party. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be, we're going to be clubbing at the Mayan. It's going to be a va boom. It's going to be a va, -va, -va boom. <laughs> so you guys get to hang out with me after the show. Um, there'll be other people hanging out too. So if you guys want to hang out. I don't hang out. You guys know I'm a fucking bitch. Like, I'll fucking come to the show. <laughs> fucking my ass is going home. You know what I mean? Get your yeah. breath out my face. <laughs> but for this, I'm going to be in a great mood. <laughs> and so we're hey, all going to hang out. Hosting, and I'll be working. So. I'll be hosting. Yeah. So we'll have a, a, a good uh, after party. Um, also, too, you guys uh, go to SiriusXM, Kevin Hart, LL Network. Check me out on Quake's House. I'm there every other week with Quake. Um, and then also go to my pod, go to my YouTube at my YouTube at Tanya Strata 334 at, uh, watch my podcast and also my cooking show. These are my labors of love. Okay. I'm See doing a I'm podcast. Saying? I'm doing a podcast because <laughs> multi, multi, multi purpose. Dude, right? I do everything but spawn. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I don't got time. I to, love it. Yeah. I love everything, it. but everything but spawn. Um, my cooking show cook, um, uh, Tanya's treats. Uh, please check it out. I did Puerto Rican rum, uh, Coquito, and I'm getting ready to film uh, Portal's Potato Balls. I'll tell you what. I think that after every show, I should stop saying what recipe I'm going to do next because then mm. I have to commit. Well, that's I part of saying it. <laughs> oh, my Put God. it out there in the universe. What and are you going to cook for our audience that's listening? Portal's Potato Balls. Portal's. Oh, you're going to make the Portal style potato balls. All right down I'll, I'll i'll attempt it they were so fucking good okay. oh my god they were so delicious but nice. let me tell you it took so long to make like so long like i realized why they ma I, I realized how they made these in cuba yeah, yeah. they made them right with like two days and 80 cubans yeah. because there's so many <laughs> steps there's so much that you have to do. Oh, they my God. I was like, are you kidding? Do, so. They had a lot yeah. of things to do. You guys fucking make potato <laughs> balls all goddamn day. This recipe That's took funny. so long for me to try to make that at one point I almost gave up and went to portals to stand in line for potato <laughs> balls. <laughs> so, <laughs> <I was> so <laughs> this is your attempt to deconstruct and make it. You didn't get the recipe from them. No. You're just you're like, I think this is how they make it. And so you make it. Yes. So awesome. so the way I did that is I found a recipe on the Internet. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I'm so the cooking show is recipes, you know, traditional recipes and ones I've stolen from the Internet. That's yeah. not the good. <laughs> 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 so my so my show is. But I take the ones that I've stolen from the Internet mm -hmm. and I recon I did. I could I add everything to it. And I'll tell you, I did the first round off mm -hmm. this one recipe. I was like, Bleh. Like, mm -hmm. dude, you know what I mean? You should throw raisins in it. What the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. So I changed around. I was like, okay, it's going to need green onions. Mm. Uh, it's going to need brown sugar. Like, because mm. there was things that weren't happening that should happen with Flavors, the flavor. Yeah. 
and it worked Damn. and it just oh my god but it's a whole it's a whole process it's probably like 10 steps wow it's a lot like and 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 i'm having to feel the way to film it i'm having to break it down where i'm having to break down each shot wow because it's gonna be so many <laughs> shots so well, that's what i'm working on i look forward to trying that mm -hmm. i look forward Brutus. to seeing you at lucha baboon oh yeah. yeah absolutely and um all of these things that you do podcasting um cooking shows mm -hmm. hosting mm -hmm. acting um all these things that you do um we have a question that we ask everybody that comes on to this show uh -huh. and the question is very simple and you can answer however you want but in one sentence uh -huh. tanya Estrada, how do you do it doggy style show <laughs> 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 there it is there. <laughs> follow, follow Tanya Estrada and um, tune in next week. Thank you very much. Thank you You're very welcome. much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>